Hi and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd Corey Knockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting October 6, 2014. This week I'm doing an on-the-road edition of the show because I'm attending Gartner's IT Expo Symposium where I've just spoken about advanced malware. So let's make this podcast very short by starting with the first of three stories. And the first is, of course, notification of next week's Microsoft Patch Day. As is true every second Tuesday of the month, next week Microsoft is releasing a whole bunch of security updates. They plan on releasing nine security bulletins. Three of them are critical, one is moderate, and the remaining five are important. The bulletins will fix security vulnerabilities in Windows, Internet Explorer, Office, the .NET Framework, and ASP.NET. So if you're a Microsoft administrator, be sure to get those updates as soon as you can. On top of that, I suspect Adobe will release some updates as well. Speaking of Adobe, the second story of the week involves an apparent digital rights management scandal with one of Adobe's e-readers. According to a researcher, the e-reader called Digital Editions, which is an Adobe e-reader used at libraries often because it allows you to enforce digital rights management and just lend books for a, a short period of time, suffers from an unknown issue where it actually is sharing a lot of your personal uh, reading habits and information to Adobe in clear text. According to this researcher, who essentially sniffed some of the traffic sent by this digital e-reader, when you uh, open books, DRS, books in this digital e-reader, it's going to scan your entire library to see all the different books you're opening. And it's going to share that information with Adobe in clear text. And it keeps track of things like your device ID, your device's IP address for geolocation, how often you've opened books, how far you've read, and how long you've read those books. Now whether or not Adobe's doing this on purpose to gather information about all our reading habits is unknown, and, and some people think that's unknown unlikely. Nonetheless, the amount of information being shared, not only about the book you're borrowing as a digital edition from the library, but about all your library, including books that don't have any DRM attached to them, is quite concerning. Really, it's the type of information you don't want everybody to know about. So hopefully Adobe will release a patch for this, but there's a lot of people up in arms, including the Electronic Fr Frontier Foundation, about this. In any case, this is an interesting security privacy story, and we hope to see Adobe release a patch for this soon, so look out for that if you use uh, Adobe's Digital Editions Reader. The last story of the week involves some ATM malware that's still allowing cyber criminals to steal millions and millions of dollars from ATMs. If you remember episodes from the past year, in January and March we've been talking about some ATM malware that infected uh, ATMs mostly in Mexico, somewhat in Europe and Asia, and used that malware to actually allow attackers to steal cash with a secret code from those ATMs. Well, during this week, Kaspersky, one of WatchGuard's security partners released some uh, research information about this malware which they call Tupkin. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's T-Y-U-P-K-I-N. And this is a piece of malware that infects Windows-based ATMs. According to Kaspersky's research, they found this malware running on around 50 ATMs in Eastern Europe. And by the way, in order to install this malware, it seems that the bad guys have to physically access the, the ATM machine and get it to load from a CD that actually has installer software. In any case, once they're able to load this malware on a ATM machine, they have a secret backdoor waiting there. So if they go to the ATM machine at certain times of, of the week at night, they can actually enter a secret code that will get them into a special menu. And then they can use this kind of one-time pad or one-time password to actually get the ATM to start spitting out a whole bunch of money. 
So obviously it's a pretty serious piece of malware that's cost banks millions of dollars. So if you're a bank with ATMs, how do you protect against this? Well, first of all, this seems to be a physical attack to some sense. They have to actually get a CD into your ATM machine. So if you have good locks on the machine, if you have alarms to, to detect tampering, that helps for sure. You can also do things like put password locks on the ATM's BIOS uh, so that people can't overwrite the BIOS and maybe even have antivirus software running on it since they actually happen to be Windows machines. Anyways, it's very interesting research. I'll be sure to put a link to Kaspersky's research in the blog post associated with this video. Go check it out if you're interested. So that's all for this week's On the Road edition. There's a ton of other stories, so be sure to check the reference section in the link associated with this video on our blog, which of course is WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com. If you don't already subscribe to WatchGuard Security Center, please do so. You can also follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank you.